Hello, beloveds of God, only believing the word of the Lord for your child's head to toe healing from autism spectrum disorder. For God is not the author of disorder, but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. This is the Autism Healing and Deliverance channel teaching podcast. I am the author of the Jesus Took Autism book series, D.R. Warring. Kindly like, subscribe, share, click that notification bell. These are my book babies for the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So anyway, I wanted to share something to encourage you today because I am so encouraged, just encouraged to tears of joy and thankfulness. And I'm just so thankful to the Lord. So I'm sharing a praise report, more healing happening in my son and powerful verses to pray. And I'm going to also do a just an excerpt reading from my book one, Autism is Not God's Will for Your Child Nor You. Um, so anyway, so I'm just in, and it's such joy and such thanksgiving, um, just seeing my son, you know, getting better and better. And it's just been happening a little bit over time. He's just, oh, it's awakenings from some of my past, uh, things that I've shared. The Lord said it's awakenings, you know, he just, he's getting better and better. It's just happening a little bit over time now, but every day I am still declaring that you know, salvation is for today. Salvation is for now. Healing is for now. And I'm expecting the now healing, but I'm not upset. I'm not angry with God, uh, you know, because it has been progressive. I'm resting in his word and its power to accomplish the healing because Jesus paid for it to be so by his stripes and his name is healer. So anyway, glory to God. Like I say before, I don't make a doctrine out of progressive healing. Uh, uh, healing can happen in one prayer, but if healing happens to be progressive, don't give up because healing is 100% God's will. Jesus paid for it on his body. So, you know, the word says in John uh, 16, 24, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I have been so full of joy. I praise you, Lord, just seeing my son getting better and better and being able to do things that we were never able to do. It was up until my son was of adult age that we were not able to do barely anything, barely anything. We were isolated and cut off from everyone. So it's not like some people like to explain things like, oh, they're, you know, the child is just maturing. No, it was up until the adult age that he was completely captive and acting like the Bible describes when someone has a spirit of lunacy on them. His, his reasoning and rationalizing was held captive by the enemy and he could not, you could not comfort him. He could not be reasoned with, with words, with love, with comfort. I couldn't touch him. I couldn't hug him. That is not God's will. And he is set free from all of that wickedness. So glory to the Lord. And he can just continues to get better and better. And what did I write as notes? Because I don't like, this is like for, for me as well, to record it for me as well. So I don't forget, you know, I went and wrote these things down quickly after, you know, just some things have been happening lately. So, you know, I'm just saying to encourage your faith not to give up on the word, right? The word is Jesus, John 1.1, 1, 1, and the the uh, word made flesh, John 1.14. Jesus is the word made flesh. So if we give up on the word, if we give up on the word, we're giving up on Jesus. Not that like say before we don't lose our salvation, but we're giving up on the Lord. He is the word. So we just keep going with the word. We rest. We put our faith in the word. We get the word into our heart and it provides the faith. And the word is the power that does the work. We put our heart believing faith in the word and it goes out and performs the healing for us. We're not doing any work. It's by grace through faith. Jesus paid it all. He did it all. He finished the work. Hallelujah. So my son is doing great. Christ's healing continues to manifest in his body, in his mind, etc. I am so full of praise to the Lord. I'm just so thankful and filled with joy and supernatural joy and peace and happiness and gladness and rejoicing, glory and, uh, and honor to you, God, to you, oh Lord. Oh, and that lady's like a little worshiper, <laughs> like worshiping the Lord and her heart is full of joy 
and that's what she represents. And that's how I feel. I'm so full of joy and praises and, you know, singing and rejoicing and singing unto the Lord and praising him. And I make up <laughs> little songs to sing to him, you know, uh, and change the lyrics to songs <laughs> and sing praises to him. They just, I'm just full of praises and my mouth is pouring out. I can't help myself. Because God is so good and his word is true. Don't give up. Don't give up. Um, so anyway, so the first verse I want to share um, with you, and this is one that you can pray also. And this is a beautiful one to pray if if the enemy at present time has a, a child's speech or tongue held captive, then this is a good one to pray. And my son used to have not only terrible speech uh, abnormalities and speech tics. And now he speaks, he speaks perfectly normal with excellent, beautiful vocabulary and communication. Praise you, Jesus. But I would pray this all the time for two reasons. One, because, he, you know, he can just rise up and call me blessed and speak healthily and normally. But also in the past, when the enemy had my son captive with so many symptoms, my son against his will. It was like, he, it was like, he hated me. It's like, I couldn't do anything right. He was always angry, angry, just everything angered him. Every little thing angered him in the past, you know, um, like another praise. So, so, uh, like, for example, we had two electrical outages here from bad storms over the past like month and a half. And in the past, um, maybe this was like when my son was, he's 21 now, but when he was like 16, we had the electricity go out with a really bad storm and it was only out and because it was a, hur a hurricane was supposedly supposed to be coming through. I don't know if it made it to hurricane level, but anyway, it was really, really bad weather. The electricity was only out for 10 minutes. That's it. And his level of ability to cope with electricity being out for just 10 minutes was this in the past, you know, so when he was 16. He took every single gallon of water that we got to be our drinking water. And there were like 16 of them. He took every single gallon of water and threw the gallon of water against the living room wall and busted it and flooded the entire floor with water because, and it was like, he had this increase of adrenaline. I could not stop him. I do not have a husband in the house to help me. My mom just stayed in her room with her door locked. And, you know, so she was listening to, 16 gallons of water being slammed against her wall just because the electricity was out for 10 minutes. Okay, fast forward to today with healing manifested in his mind restored and being restored fully. You know, the electricity went out two times and it was just a completely normal reaction, just like me. This is a pain. This is inconvenient. When is it going to be back on? Just normal. Not trying to destroy the entire house because he can't cope with electricity being out. And it was out for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> the first time was a long time. The second time was only two hours and a completely normal reaction. Annoying. Like I was annoyed too because I, we were hungry and just normal reaction to it. Praise you, Jesus. So I put um, in the little bubble, my redeemer lives. Why? Because in the past, my son, because of the symptoms, not because that's who he really was, because he know we talk about how he d had done so many things against his will. He did not want to do these things. He didn't want to act like a you know like a maniac and go into rages and attack for no reason. He didn't want to, you know, quote unquote, be mean to me and react to me the way he did. He didn't want to have body ticks and um, uh, speak things against his will over and over and over again. He was he's able to describe that all of these things happened against his will. He didn't want to do them. Hence, more anger and frustration. Imagine for a moment that so, uh, uh, for, that you wouldn't have control. I'm not speaking this over you, but that you wouldn't have control over your own body and your body was just doing things against your will. You were speaking against your will because you you're quote unquote, your mind keeps telling you, we know the end, it's the enemy that you, you have to say things over and over again until you're satisfied and you have no control. Can you imagine going to work, trying to go to work like that? And you're talking to your boss and you have to say something like 10 times in a row and, 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 and you would like, you know, explode because it was driving you crazy. Not you, you know what I'm just saying, just 
people don't put themselves in these children's shoes and it just it's so sad sometimes i know us parents we can understand that but gosh my goodness my son you know just described it as being completely tormenting and his will being controlled and he did not like it he did not accept it and it made him angry and explosive you know to 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 be like that so anyway so i so my son so i put a little note in purple sorry i like go off on tangents i prayed this verse many times when i saw the opposite for so long her children rise up and call her blessed proverbs 31 28 like i said it was like my son could not stand me but it had nothing to do with me he was just taking everything out on me because i was there basically you know all of his problems frustrations and all the things he felt in his body and you know all the frustrations from all these things happening to his body against his in his mind against his will you know so i prayed proverbs 31 28 many times when even when i saw the opposite for so long i prayed it and prayed it and prayed it and his speech is perfect now and we have an excellent beautiful relationship that we communicate beautifully now it's so wonderful and beautiful so my, recently my son said i'm so thankful and lucky to have you as my mother you know i see this right i know how lucky i am the way you cared for me no one would have cared for me the way you do you didn't put me through things most kids parents make them go through if you were other parents, like he means like the ungodly, he recognizes that he's lucky, but he says lucky, I'm just quoting him, that he's blessed to have a godly mother. He knows it, you know? And if, he said, if you were other parents, like as the ungodly, I know I would have been in trouble. You understood I was doing those things against my will. You're such a good mother. I love you very much. And he mentioned again how much better he is now and all of those things. And why am I mentioning this? Not to toot my own horn. I'm mentioning it because my Redeemer lives in the little orange text on, on the under the purple. It says the enemy had used many to wrongly attack my parenting for years. Since my son was, you know, a, a very young, um, you know, he, he had very bad hyperactivity problems and he, as a result, had lots of quote unquote behavioral problems in school from kindergarten just all the years in school in church everywhere at people's homes christians homes from pastors okay so close family relatives with the exception of my mother my mother was always supportive and kind and loving towards me close family members pastors elders other christians um people schools after care child care places, you know, a daycare that I had to put my son in. My parent, I was blamed for quote unquote behavior issues that I was, that my son was doing against his will because of these symptoms, because of the disorder and chaos in his body. So for years and years and years, the enemy used people to attack me and blame me and say, put it all on me. It's your parenting. If you would just discipline him more, if you would just do this, if you would just do that and it's you. And, and if you don't get your son in order, you're, you know, I know you're a single mom and he doesn't have a father, but you're the father and you're the mother. And I mean, they, I was reamed until I was in tears by a pastor, his wife and two elders. And they were reaming me and telling me I need to get my parenting together. My son has behavioral problems. I mean, they reamed me and I was in tears and they would not relent. They just cut pummeling me and pounding me with criticism and this and that. And when they were reaming me and telling me I was the mother and the father, the Holy Spirit, I don't know why I just didn't get up and leave. I don't know. I just sat there and cried like a dodo. But anyway, um, the uh, um, Holy Spirit was telling me while the pastor's telling me that I have to be mother and father. And he, the Holy Spirit was telling me, I created you female. I created you female. You could never be a man. You could never be a father. I am a father to the fatherless, you know, and that made me cry more. Of course, I was just sobbing because even though they were raming me and hurting me and pummeling me, I just, when the Lord spoke that to me, his peace washed over me. And of course I never went back to that church again. And I mean, Christians can really be cruel and be used by the enemy against each other. We have to take care. You know, they didn't understand. They didn't have a child with the problems that my son had and he wasn't officially diagnosed back then because I didn't know what I know now and how I handled things. But anyway, that wasn't the point. The point was that my Redeemer lives and and my son 
is always kind and sweet and considerate and thankful and kind to me and concerned about me and expresses love, compassion, caring and concern towards me. And in the past from my other videos, you know that my son used to be violent. He used to he used to attack me, he used to beat me up all the time. And I know he didn't want to do it. It was the it was the disorder causing it, the symptoms. It was, you know, spiritual demonic stuff going on because I believe that the disorders of the mind, a lot of it is spirits of infirmity and demonic. And it is night and day, completely different. Our relationship, our interaction, his level, his ability to reason and rationalize. We can, I can talk to him. We can talk to each other and reason through everything like a normal, healthy person. Okay. So my redeemer lives. I mean, from, you know, my son is saying, I said, you know, just praising me, you know, rising up and calling me blessed. And out of nowhere, he just started saying this to me recently. You know, he just started saying this to me recently, he just did it. You know, he just said it to me and it was so touched because all I could think of was that my redeemer lives. He is the redeemer. He redeems, he restores, he turns around, just stay with the Lord and his word. So, um, and also what happened as a result of him telling me, you know, how he's much better again, that prompted me to say to him, you know, um, it was the perfect segue, oh, not for me, <laughs> for me to say to my son, you know how you got better, right? Who made you better? And then, of course, he said, yes, yes, I know. I know. Meaning the Lord through my prayers of faith and the word. And then the little purple text says, he, meaning my son, has seen God answer my prayers too many times to deny it. Glory to God. So back up to the like the brownish text. I have been praying for him to return to the Lord. I can see his heart changing. He's asking me to pray again because he sees God answers when I pray. The things that my prayers that my son has seen God answer when I pray in faith, just taking God for his word, right? So I'm putting heart belief, believing faith in God's word, like a little child, just simple childlike faith, and God is performing it for us. So he's seen my prayers answer too many times to deny it. And now he's even saying, you know, can you do your thing? You know, can you do your thing about this? Can you do your thing about this? And that he means pray. You know, he, like I said, he's not walking with the Lord yet. But in Jesus name, I bind him to the narrow path with Jesus Christ. He is a mighty man of God in the name of Jesus. Because your word says, Lord God, that my descendants are mighty on the earth. And the fruit of my womb is blessed. So I thank you, Jesus. And I just keep speaking the word regarding him and he's coming around he's coming around because in the past he would literally scream that he hated god and he hated god that he you know that um that he was sick and tormented and bullied and he blamed him for everything and he would scream and if, if i would even say anything about god he would yell at me he would cuss me out with vile strings of curse words i mean it nothing nothing like that at all it's a good wonderful beautiful relationship with my son now with excellent communication and understanding my son can tell me anything and you know even say things like you know if i annoyed him about something which i wouldn't intentionally do he'll express that to me and in loving compassion and understanding we talk through everything we have a relationship and we work things out through communication it's beautiful next um Okay, here's a very wonderful verse I talked about at the beginning slide. Another wonderful verse to pray, pray if your if your family is in isolation and caught off from family and things are hard because of autism spectrum disorder, or you know it limits the family or you know the life the, your life is you know consumed by therapies and doctors visits and all of these things instead of living life because you know that's captivity. God wants you free. So here's another a good verse to pray. Psalm 1819. He also brought me, or you can say, he also brought us out into a broad place. He delivered us. He delivered my child and my family because he delighted in us in the name of Jesus. And you just pray that and you prophesy and you believe it because that is his will. So this is another verse I put, also prayed many times when I saw the opposite for so long. I prayed this verse so many times and, you know, um, We've been getting out of the house and before that was impossible, you know, you know, we go out to eat and, um, and we, you know, we just get ready and just like healthy people and get out of the house and, and go do things, 
you know, and my son said the other day, I'm reading the black now. He feels much better when he gets out of the house. Oh my gosh, Jesus, this is a miracle. These are miraculous words. And, but in the past, we were always isolated. The symptoms of this disorder kept us bound and he quote unquote preferred to stay home because it was too overwhelming just to get ready. As in the past, symptoms were even too bad for it to be possible to leave the house, you know? And I put here, his name is faithful and true. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is faithful and true. Your word is true. You are faithful and true. So we have plans. You know, my mom's going to be on vacation and we're going to, um, you know, go travel to Orlando and, you know, and this and that, which is not far from us. And, um, <clears throat> like an hour and a half and, um, you know, uh, just go out to eat and just do different things as a family that we haven't been able to do for a long time, you know, and, uh, with my mom, you know, like a lot of times my mom gets excluded, but he's like, I want to go out to dinner with grandma. I miss, you know, doing things with her too. We used to do a lot of things and we, we've been going out and doing things like going an hour away to David Buster's, going to Orlando sometimes, um, going out to eat and things like that. And, um, but we haven't really done it with my mom so much like coordinating our schedules and stuff. And he wants to do that. He, you know, he's really kind. He's such a kind young man, you know, so kind. Um, so what? Oh, 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 happy day. Oh, that song came into my head when I was, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. You know, that one. Um, when Jesus washed. Okay. So what did I write here? Okay. I praise God that I'm seeing more and more of my son, his God intended self, which means free of the chains of an oppression of sickness. So I'm seeing more and more of my son's God intended self shine through. Our relationship is so good and beautiful now with excellent communication, utterly and miraculously different than the disorder, chaos and torment of the past. Yes. Torment. And I put this little image down here with a, a boy help opening a door for an elderly woman. Now my son is 21. He's not little. He would have been taller than the the, uh, the elderly lady. But anyway, we went to a restaurant, you know, uh, like this week. Well, last Sunday. Yeah, it was still this week. And it was great because <clears throat> my son is so kind and so sweet and so considerate, you know, and we were leaving and someone was leaving behind us and he went ahead because there are like two sets of doors to go through. There's an outside set and an inside set with like, I guess there's a small little waiting area there. I don't even know what's in that little foyer thing. But anyway, there are two sets of doors and my son saw that there were people coming behind us and he let, he held the door for me, you know, to begin with. He went to open the door for me because he's so sweet and kind and <clears throat> then he helped continue to hold the door open so that the people behind us can get through. And then they grabbed the door. Then he went to the other sets of doors, opened the door for me again and held it open so they can get through again. And they were like, thank you. Thank you. And I made sure I said, you know, thank you, honey. You're, you're so kind. I really appreciate it. And I praised him back and oh my gosh, none of this would, would have been possible in the past. I mean, the level of cruelty that, that, this disorder caused my son to be towards me in the past when he was not, you know, when the awakenings had not happened by miraculously, when, um, the, you know, the, the healing that he has not, hasn't manifested. I mean, he was always mean and cruel to me, but again, against his will. I mean, he was just angry about everything. I walked on eggshells. I lived in terror and torment because of it. And of course he did too. He was terrorized and tormented by the condition and because, and it manifested that he, you know, terrorized and tormented me, you know, um, it was terrible. It was terrible. And I've said before, I mean, it, it, it just, it just, it just felt like all you wanted to do is just lay down and die. You know, we were constantly sleep deprived. It was, it was horrible. It was so horrible, but glory to God. His word is true. Do not give up on his word. Um, so I, I like to speak as a matter of healthy versus unhealthy. The enemy gets people to grasp onto these man-made earthly terms. So I, I'm talking about what are we praying for? We're praying for a child to be healed and restored to good health, to restore to normal God-intended health, that everything in the body is functioning 
the way God intended, including the mind, the gut, everything. So we're talking about healthy versus unhealthy. Not all of these terms the enemy has inspired people to use to deceive them into embracing sickness and disorder, a.k.a. oppression of the devil. Acts 10.38. We stick to God's definitions, God's definition of all definitions, yeah, of all things to shine his light on, I meant to say on, on the evil one's terms of twisting and confusion. We know a lot of... Um, the enemy gets gets people to, you know, inspires man to come up with these like thousands and thousands and thousands of thousands of terms to describe sickness. And then because of that, people embrace it as their identity. And that is not God's will. So let's just stick to God's definition. Every sickness, disease, disorder, defect is oppression of the enemy. Acts 10.38. They all fall under that category. If you look at the original Greek, the um, in Acts 10.38, the word that is used for oppression, mean, oppression of the devil, that meaning there is intended to mean domination or lordship of the devil over one's body through sickness. You know, it's oppression of the devil. So I stick to God's definitions for all things Therefore, crushing the lies and confusion of the enemy. John, uh, thir third John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your soul prospers, the Holy Spirit inspired John to write um, these words. This was by inspiration of the Holy Spirit that it was, this was written and put into the Holy Word of God. Be in health. Well, beloved... I pray this over your children and family. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health in the name of Jesus, just as your soul prospers in the name of Jesus. Okay, so this is about healthy versus unhealthy. Not all these crazy terms that, that man comes up with to reason away from the word of God and embrace sickness. That's of the enemy. So, yes, I wanted to read expert experts excerpts is what I'm trying to say from chapter 14 teach lead love and bias um a mom brought you know mentioned something to me recently and brought this chapter to my remembrance and I when I was reading it I'm like oh I wish I would have put Isaiah 54 13 in it so I wanted to read it and talk about it a little bit because Isaiah 54 13 is another verse that you can pray that's very powerful all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. I pray this over my son thousands and thousands of times, too many times to count. And we are not parenting our children alone. Glory to God. We co we can choose to co-parent with the Lord and trust him to help teach our children so their peace shall be great. Okay, this is, I have put this word to work for me many times. Many, 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 many times, especially as a single mom. Um, and so, and then I'll read Ephesians 6, 12. That's on the screen um, after, and you'll see why I'm going to elaborate with those two verses as I read. So I'm reading right now chapter, uh, some, just some excerpts. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Teach chapter 14, teach, lead, love, invite from my first book, book one, autism is not God's will for your child, nor you. Okay, so I'll read the lead verse. Um, the children of the righteous will be delivered. Hey, Proverbs eleven twenty one. another one to write down and pray. The children of the righteous will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Your children are, will be delivered because you are the righteousness of God and Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So you can look up Proverbs eleven twenty one and pray that as well. Since I forgot. So um, let's see where I wanted to start reading this. Okay, um, understanding, I'll start, I'm reading now from the book, understanding that each reader's child's current level of functioning could be vastly different from the next, I'd say to parents, be led by the Holy Spirit on how to teach and lead your child regarding his or her healing. It's a delicate balance of nurturing and caring for our children's needs while staying true to the word of God, but it can be done with his help. I skip down a little bit and continue reading. 
As parents, we teach, lead, love, and invite our children into knowing God and his ways. We don't force as he never forces. He invites and draws us to him by love. And because by faith we believe our children were healed, 1 Peter 2.24, this doesn't equate to denying whatever their current needs may be. Okay, I skipped on a little bit. Therefore, um, I continue reading out. What I'm doing, and this I wrote, uh, I published this in the summer. Sorry, pausing here. I published this in the summer of, I think, 2021. So anyway, so just a little time frame context. Okay, so I continue reading. What I'm doing until my son's healing fully manifests is meeting him and his needs where they are each day. For example, if he needs a tag cut off a t-shirt, I'm going to cut that annoying tag off. I'm not going to dismiss him nor tell him I won't cut the tag off because I believe he was healed by Jesus. That would be unkind, cruel even. I adjust to my son and his needs and as his symptoms fall away. I don't try to make my son adjust to what he can't do or try to force him force him to line up with the word of God. Never. Jesus is the healer, not me. He causes my son's health to line up with his word when I take it by faith and speak it out as a weapon against the works of the devil attacking his body. Just as salvation is an invitation, so is healing. I've accepted the invitation on behalf of my son and lovingly invite him to know the truth that sets free about it too. So all that to say is how I incorporate um, the two verses that are on the screen right now. So the reason why I, we cannot force our, so for example, if a parent may believe, okay, yeah, my child's healed in the name of Jesus, you know, yes, we have faith, but helping your child with your current, their current needs for that day is not denying the word. Like if the child, like I said, needs a tag cut off, we, we accommodate the child's needs. Uh, we don't try to deny that they that that need for the child, because that would be cruel towards the child. They, we call them healed and we stay in heart agreement with the Lord, but it's the Lord's word that does the healing. We don't force a child to do what they cannot do. We're not the healer. Jesus is the healer. So our job is to, to love our children, help them and take care of their needs. And those symptoms could fall away all at one time and they are healed with a prayer or the symptoms fall away little by little for, you know, whatever reason, because it's a, it's a spiritual battle. Um, we help them with their, their needs for each day because we are not the healers. We can't force our children into healing in the natural because that's why I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6, 12. So the attack of the enemy with sickness against our children's body, it's a spiritual attack. It's a spiritual attack. So we can't force, quote unquote, force our children into healing by our natural actions we wouldn't say i'm not cutting that tag off your shirt because you're healed that would be horrible that would be cruel because we don't we don't make the healing happen jesus paid for the healing he already healed them by his stripes yes it's finished but if it's not manifested yet we take care of their needs we love them we nurture them and 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 take care of everything that they need and god the word, when the word manifests, then as the symptoms fall away, then you, you know, they don't have those same needs again. And that's what's happened with me. I've always taken care of all of my son's needs and the symptoms fall away and those needs become less and less, you know, because I can't, we can't force our children to be healed. It's the word that's doing the healing, you know, and it's done and it's actively happening because of, you know, because it's an act of work, work of power 
fighting against the enemy, but it's done. Does that make sense? <laughs> and then Isaiah 54, 13 is one of my favorite verses. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. So I can trust the Lord too, that whatever my son is not willing to receive from me in teaching wise, I can go to the father and say, Lord, teach my son this. Your word says, Father, and as Isaiah 54, 13, that you're going to teach my son so his peace will be great. So, Father, you know, my son is not receiving from me from this issue, Lord God, and I'm just asking that you teach him to it, you know, and, and I've seen my this word work so many times in my life, and my son will come back, and I've never spoken one word of something to my son. I've only told the Lord and asked for his help, and my son has come back and said the exact things to me um, that I was asking the Lord to teach him, you know. So the word is true. The word is true. We don't, we're not parenting our children alone. You know, the word is powerful. The word is powerful. The word is alive. The word is spirit, you know. So anyway, so God is good. And because I uh, um, uh, submitted myself to the Lord and surrendered myself to the Lord and co-parented with the Lord through this whole thing, and my son has eyes to see uh, how I handled it. And how I handled his behaviors. I didn't try to punish him and discipline him for things he was doing against his will. That would, that would be wrong. I mean, I knew that I knew that this the disorders were controlling his will, controlling his body, controlling his speech, controlling his behaviors, controlling, you know, it's um, the body and soul. And the soul is mind, will, and emotions, controlling his soul, making him do things he didn't want to do. And acting in ways he didn't want to act. And and he was at enough level of functioning even then, like afterward, he would be able to tell me, I don't want to do these things. I don't want to act this way, you know, and I don't want to move my body like this. This is all in the past. These are a lot of things, all a lot of many things that my son was healed from. Anyway, but to see everything that my son was healed from, you can look at this video and I do a reading from the book. You can find Autism Sims Heal for My Son. By Jesus stripes and he and to know he has gotten better and better since I posted that and published that in the book and did did the um, video on it talking about it reading from it and you know he has gotten better and better by Jesus stripes this and he's getting better and better and better it's happening gradually but in Jesus name I call it done I am not fretting I'm in complete rest I am complete rest because the word is performing it. I'm not performing any of it. I'm just agreeing with God in heart, believing faith and heart, believing childlike faith in his word. And um, then, you know, when I join I, my faith with the, with the word and agreement with the word, then that word is activated and it goes out in power and accomplishes what God promises. But we have to believe we have to believe we have to believe. Here are some more verses that powerful verses that you can pray for um, your child and over your child and prophesy over your child. Isaiah 58, 8, my child, so you can call your child's name. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. So you can prophesy that over your child, you know, and living water. I put there at the top. We're called to be living water to the world, right? To bring the word and spirit to this world. Isaiah 61, 4, you can prophesy this over your family, over your children, over yourself. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. So we know that sickness, disease and disorders can cause ruins in families' lives. And, and it affects the, the, the marriage, it affects the siblings. It's it's very, very hard. It brings ruins. It brings financial ruin to families. So um, you can prophesy Isaiah 61, 4, right? Okay. And another one that you can pray. So um, Isaiah 58, 12, you can pray and prophesy this. Instead of saying, some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes, we are called to bring the kingdom of God. When, when Jesus commissioned the disciples, he said, go preach Christ, heal the sick, raise the dead, uh, cast out demons, um, and um, tell them that the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven has come near unto you. 
we have the Holy Spirit in us, which means we have the kingdom of God in us. And when we fill us ourselves with his word, we can bring that word. So we have the resurrection power and life of Jesus Christ in us. We have the kingdom of God in us, you know, so believe that, believe that, you know, activate that in your life by heart, believing faith that you just take God for his word and you prophesy over yourself and over your children, over your family. Isaiah 58, 12. I will rebuild the deserted ruins of my cities. Then I will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. Because we have Christ in us and we're called to be Christ to the world. And the same works that Jesus did, we will do greater works. We are called to bring the kingdom of God to this suffering world, being attacked and devoured by the enemy that is not of God. And then I'm not going to read this, but I suggest for a reading. I, I'm, I'm just putting, I just pasted it here um, to read Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, the good news of salvation. We are called to proclaim liberty to the captives. And when you read this, you'll see that liberty and freedom from captivity glorifies the Lord. It does not say that captivity glorifies the Lord. And remember, in Acts 10, 38, God defined sickness as oppression or captivity of the enemy. Sickness is captivity of the enemy. It does not glorify the Lord. We are called to proclaim liberty to the captives, captives which means healing, healing, right? So God is so good. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm just so full of joy and just singing songs of praise and, you know, just pouring my heart out with love and thanksgiving toward the Lord. And I pray this encouraged you and blessed you abundantly. God is good. His word is only true. Continue to hold onto the word. Continue to put the word into your heart. Plant the seeds of the word and water it with more of the word in your heart. If you pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Just be so filled and edified in every way with the Lord and his word and just surround yourself with his, his word, his life. Anyway, well, I pray this was a blessing to you. God is good by Jesus' stripes. Your children were healed by grace. Through faith, we are saved, not of works. It's a gift of God. Lest any of us boast, we receive all the, the uh, benefits of salvation by faith, which is salvation for eternal life and healing a physical body and deliverance from demonic spirits. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's one finished work. Thank you, Jesus. One finished work. Thank you, Jesus, to destroy the works of the devil. I call your children healed in the name of Jesus. I call your children healed from head to toe and in their soul, mind, will, and emotions in the name of Jesus. Be loosed from those infirmities in the name of Jesus. Be loosed from disorder and chaos in the name of Jesus. Beautiful and precious children. I hear chains falling off. I hear chains turning to dust and never coming on your families again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have a blessed, blessed day. Please like, share, comment if this was a blessing to you. Um, thank you so much. God bless you.